always been fascinated with motorcycles? Uh, I would say the fascination started when I got on the back of my dad's Harley Davidson. He was riding a Road King at the time, and I was about 21. Uh, and after that first ride, I was just absolutely dead set on, on having a motorcycle. Um, one of the reasons I didn't I didn't get into it before then uh, was because my mom uh, actually got run over by a motorcycle when she was nine years old. So she was vehemently against motorcycles. Uh, and so, I, you know, kind of wanted to res respect those wishes. And I had brought it up to her before and she she was she was she was not having any of it. Uh, but I had always been into motorsports, uh, like driving go karts. I mean, my dad got me in a go kart when I was five years old uh, and used to used to drive us as kids in his BMWs and Mercedes at top speed around the back roads in England. So I've always kind of had a, a need for speed. But what really got me hooked was when I when I actually got on the back of, of my first motorcycle and I just felt the wind and I and I felt the lean and I was just like, oh, this is this is I got to get into this. Right. Uh, do you do you remember the very first motorcycle you owned? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually only started riding about five years ago. My first motorcycle was a Suzuki Boulevard S40. Uh, it's a 650cc cruiser. And the reason why I chose that one was because I felt fairly confident after my first uh, after the after learning how to ride at the riding school uh, and I didn't want to get something too small like a lot of people said like ride a 300 or get something smaller and I was like oh, I want to go for something a little bigger so I got the 650 and it's a cruiser right so it's not it's not going as uh, quite as fast as say a sport bike um, and I, that bike was good but a lot of my friends that I you know actually did, I didn't have any friends who rode at the time when I first got that motorcycle but through riding of course as you know you just you just meet people you, everywhere you go you just you make friends as, as you ride so the more friends I gained in the motorcycle space the more I started to lean towards uh, sport bikes so I actually sold that that first bike in in my first three months and then I got I upgraded to a Suzuki, Suzuki GSXR 750 uh, and then I rode that for, for a couple of years and actually did my first track day uh, that same year. So the, the, the first year I started riding, I actually got on the track at the, the very end of that first year. Great. So um, was it the track day itself that sort of sparked your interest getting into to racing and, uh, and, and track riding mostly? Yeah, it, it, it definitely was. It, it really sparked something in me for sure. Get it, getting onto the track. Um, I felt... <laughs> I went pretty fast on my first go and, and I actually had, you know, they have sort of the control riders who, who ride around with the bikes on the track. He came over and he's like, you're really close to, 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 to dropping that bike because you're really leaning it over. Let me show you how to ride it properly. And so uh, that was really game changing for me. You know, I started to learn proper um, riding position and proper riding skills. And really that's where I got to hone them was at the track and just really to start feel feeling more comfortable on a motorcycle and, and how it how it handles and how it works under heavy braking and cornering and, and, and all of that. Right. So, you know, in your opinion, what is it about, you know, a motorcycle and motorcycling that really makes people so passionate about it? I think for a lot of people, it's it's that feeling of freedom. Um, when you're on a motorcycle, you, you can't really think about anything else. You have to be so vigilant when you're on the road uh, that you, you really can't be worrying about, you know, what so-and-so said an hour before. So I think it's, you know, aside from the freedom, being able to go anywhere and do anything uh, and be by yourself, it's also that like the freedom of the mind, like being able to free your mind and just it, it, every time you come back from a ride, it, it feels like you just had an hour long yoga session, right? Or meditation session. It's, it's just like therapy for people, but they don't have to do anything other than, other than ride. Right. And, and those who don't ride don't understand. So, um, yeah. so I'll, flip, I'll flip that around a little bit. What is it, in your opinion, do you think is, is, is what holds most people back or makes them so afraid of motorcycles and motorcycling? I think definitely one of the biggest thing is the safety aspect of it. I mean, that's the first thing that my friends and family kind of said to me when I was riding a motorcycle. They're like, oh, like they're, they're not they're not safe. Um, and I think that that really puts people off, especially in, you know, if unless you have a family or a friend who's like really into it and can kind of encourage you to get into it. I think that side of things really, really holds holds people back in general. Um, I think another thing like that's specific to women, and maybe we'll get into this a little later on, uh, is, is, is that 
like when I switched to the sport bike specific, like I chose the cruiser because it had a lower seat height, it was a bit more manageable. But the manageability for the of the majority of bikes for the average uh, woman who's you know say five four. Uh, is is pretty difficult. Like they're they're quite heavy and, and intimidating. So I think that is that is also a, um, an aspect of of what um, you know why people might be a little bit hesitant in the beginning to to try it out. Right. Um, so switching gears just a little bit, tell me a little bit about how you got involved with Damon and what it was that kind of attracted you to that project and to that company. Now. Yeah. So. Um, my background has been in marketing uh, and technology uh, and, and sort of the entrepreneurship spec spectrum. And um, it was actually, I was at the point in my career where I was like, okay, I think I, I want to start my own, my own thing. Like I was really looking at the entrepreneurship kind of, kind of uh, space. And at that same time, um, that was the year that I'd started riding a motorcycle as well. Um, and so it was actually on a on a group ride that uh, I met Jay, who's the C, who's the founder of, of Damon, um, and he came to that ride. And, and so you know, as you know, we just talk to people in the community. So Jay, Jay and I got talking, and he's he's like, um, yeah, I'm you know working on on the safety tech for for motorcycles. Um, and you know, he really had me at that because I was like, technology and motorcycles, like those two actually go together. Um, uh, so, I, and he's like, yeah, you know, we're looking to hire people. And so really, really, that was it for me. I was like, oh, that I'm going that way because it really was the intersect of what I really was passionate about in my career and also just what I really love to do recreationally as well. Great. Um, and so, uh, you know, how has your background as a rider, a racer, track day enthusiast really helped shape your role and helped in your role at Damon? Uh, it's it helps immensely it's it really because the product it, i mean the product itself uh is based around ride and needs right so uh because i was an empl early employee although i work in marketing i i had a very strong influence on the first product and coming up, up with the innovation and the ideas um around the safety technology i worked kind of in the product and defining how it should work and what it should look like. Um, and so really understanding the rider needs and being a rider myself, like every day, you know, riding to work, thinking about like, oh yeah, this could be more comfortable or I'm like really feeling hunched over right now. Um, it, it just plays into my work at Damon um, massively. Um, the other side of it is uh, really understanding the, you know, in motorcycling, it's kind of different than cars because you do have those sort of segments of, of car people who are really into say Audis or in, into cars, but really across motorcycling, the community is, is just like nothing else. And the community really has their own, you know, mindsets and the, the ways they see things and the way they understand and how they talk to each other and the language they use. Uh, that non-motorcyclists wouldn't necessarily understand. And so really at Damon, we're, we're, we're an authentic brand. And so it's really important, like for me, at least, you know, to have motorcyclists in the company who can really deeply understand the needs of the customer and can communicate with them in a way that they want to be communicated with and build a product that really actually uh, uh, fits the, the need of the, of the industry. So, yeah, we, we touched on a little earlier, but, you know, Tell me a little bit from your experience where you see the differences in how women approach motorcycles and motorcycling versus maybe how men approach it and, and how does that play in in your design and in your features? Yeah, so, um, you know, typical motorcycles are, are built for the, the average man. I mentioned this before, um, you know, the, 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 the height is like, you know, five five foot eight, six foot, uh, 170 pounds. You see this in the suspension and how, how, the, how the motorcycles are built. Um, and so they're, they're really targeted towards that clientele. And as I mentioned before as well, like, you know, it's a male dominated industry. So a lot of the time when um, men come in into ride motorcycles, they already know they have friends or, or, or their dad or, or whoever, like who actually, you know, brings them into the community um, and so it's it's really quite straightforward I mean you know some people it's different but for the majority you know it's quite straightforward and then you have your guy friends that, that you go riding with you walk into a dealership and and they you know they they, they think you're going to buy a bike and so they you know they'll help you and be and, and assist you and you know quite well 
for women um, and, you know, for the people that I, I particularly know and myself, it was a little bit more difficult um, when it was, it's, for one thing, it's, it's intimidating because when you go to a rider meet for the first time, and there's like, you know, zero women or like one woman there, it's, 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 it's intimidating, you know, and they're all talking about the, the chicken strips or you know, whatever, how fast they rode. And so it's, you know, it's, it's definitely more it women don't want that bravado necessarily um and so it's it's a little bit intimidating and a little bit more difficult but you know on the flip side of that as you know i remember going to a ride once and this there was one girl there and immediately we're friends right and it, it, it so we have there's a smaller of a community but it's definitely more difficult to break into into the communities um of riding and again the same for bikes like um the, even the controls like too far away right we have little hands <laughs> so you know it's 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 difficult for women to reach the reach the controls um it's difficult to reach the floor it's difficult to get comfortable so you know women might get on a motorcycle and then they'll drop it a few times and then they'll be like oh, I, I just i can't do this right and it's 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 more intimidating than if you can sort of pull up as, as a man and then you you know you don't feed it back right you can walk your bike back but if you're five four and you're on a little bit of a bigger bike, you have to get off your bike. You might drop it, and then you have to, you know, <laughs> pick it back up, and then you have to walk it back. And everybody else is lined up watching you, watch, watching you do this. So there is a definite, tangible, different experience uh, in the actual riding experience itself uh, for for both men and women, and that's in a community aspect and also in in a product uh, experience as well. Right. Um... All right, so now I'm gonna get a little personal. Uh, if I were to open your your garage door at home, what would I find in there? I, will I see the GSXR still, or is there anything else in there? <laughs> you will. You'll see the GSXR. It's now a track bike, um, a, a very well loved track bike. Um, I also have um, a CBR 1000 RR. That's also uh, that's also a track bike, and uh, I also have. Um, a Panaga a Ducati Panigale 1299S. That's my my street my street bike. Um, and then we have a, a company bike that I borrow sometimes, KTM Super Duke 1290R. Uh, that's not in my garage, but it's it's a, it's in the work garage. Um, that one is is one of my favorites, um, especially for longer trips, just with the more upright position, but it still has has a lot of power. Uh, and then of course you'll see uh, my fiance's bikes as well. Any particular destinations you like to ride to or roads you like to ride on? Yeah, I mean, a, a favorite of mine is the Sea to Sky Highway um, just in, in Vancouver here. It's very, very beautiful. Uh, it's, 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 it's super scenic. And, and, you know, if you go sort of earlier in the morning or you choose a non-peak hour, you can get up to a good speed up there too. It's a highway road, so you can kind of get, you know, winding corners. Uh, that's definitely one of, one of my favorites. And then for, um, for a, a more of a day trip, uh, I would say the Sunshine Coast. Um, is also a beautiful ride. You do have to take a short ferry, um, but it, it kind of makes it more special because uh, then you kind of group up with the motorcyclist at the very front of the ferry, make some friends, um, and then and then you go off. And, and that is a very, very beautiful ride as well. Um, that's more of a day trip. You kind of have to take a full day for that one. Any place that you haven't ridden that, that if I said we can give you an all expenses paid trip there, is there one place that you are you just have to ride at some point in your life? This one is actually closer to home, but I, I would like to go down the California coast and so take, you know, a week or a couple of weeks to just, uh, you know, go through all of the states down there along the ocean. That is something I haven't done yet. Yeah, you and me both. Um, so good. Uh, anything that we didn't cover that you want to touch on? Final thoughts? I mentioned that my mom got run over um, by a motorcycle when she was nine years old. And so she's been very, very, very against getting getting a motorcycle. Um, <laughs> my dad was uh, suggesting motorcycles for me and he printed out um, an, Im uh, an image of one that he was going to show to me on the printer. And <laughs> she like lost her mind. And so from there, I was like, OK, I'm I am not 
going to cause <laughs> any problems between mom and dad. I'm just going to leave, let that be. Um, and so, but eventually, like I said, it just, you know, I, I went on the back of my dad's bike and I, it just really caught up to me. So I eventually, you know, got that first bike. I got the Suzuki Boulevard S40 that I told you about. Uh, and then I switched to the Jixxer and I, I hid that Jixxer from her uh, for a year. And at the time um, I lived in a condo and, and she would come and visit every couple of months. So every time she'd come and visit, I'd have to find somewhere to hide the motorcycle. So I have to keep moving it. Um, and then I also was having so much fun on my motorbike that like whenever she'd come, I just was really dying to tell her about all the fun I've been having, but I couldn't. And eventually it just became too much for me not, not to tell her. So I was like, okay, uh, how am I going to do this? Like, I, she's going to go be really mad at me. So I was like, okay, mom, like we're going to go for a walk. So I talk, she's like, okay. So we took her for a walk and I'm like, okay, mom, I've, I've got something to tell you. And she's like, oh my goodness. She's like, what happened? Like, did you get pregnant? Like what, what, what happened? And I said, I bought a motorcycle and she said, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, and then I told her about, about Damon and, uh, and she knows about my racing now and, and she's, um, she's it's done a three full 360 and she's like you know what I just want you to be happy and um, she's really proud of of everything that that we've done at Damon and she's she's proud of my track riding she prefers not to watch but she <laughs>